Fender Strat. The customer wanted to do a setup, but a setup is not an option because the guitar needs a new nut. So how do you know when a guitar needs a new nut? Well, it depends on the situation. So I'll throw this one under the microscope and I'll show you. Yeah, man, here it is. This is the nut that I removed from that guitar. Uh, so first I'll take you over to the shop and we'll look at this nut through the microscope. I'll show you what was wrong with it. Um, and to be honest, I, I was actually mistaken about something that I said at the shop and you'll see what when I bring you back over here because here we're gonna use this microscope to discover some additional details about this nut. So make sure you stick around because it's gonna be interesting, okay? So welcome back to Guitar Quackery. And remember, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, if you wanna make sure you have a good guitar, make sure the guitar has a good nut. Important if you're buying a guitar, especially a used one. Anyway, I'll stop talking now and let me take you over to the shop and then we'll do some more talking. We're just doing a diagnostics video. Uh, we just want to look at the nut and find out um, why it is that this nut needs to be replaced. Uh, why don't I first show you the guitar? Uh, it's, a, it's a Strat. It's a Fender Strat. Um, it's got a seven and a quarter inch radius uh, fretboard. Here it's got some kind of shim. It's uh, from a pick, I think. It's I think it's a, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, but we're focused on the nut. So um, why don't I uh, show you um, through the microscope? So first of all, uh, on this one, we do have a good distance from from the first fret to the bottom of the string. You can use feeler gauges to measure that. Um, in this case, there's a mosquito here. <laughs> um, I'm using a very, very thin feeler gauge, just uh, pushing the string against the second fret and checking to see if it passes. And it does pass. So, that's not the problem. Um, we'll see the problem when I look through the microscope. So here you can see um, it's been filled with super glue. Let's focus better here. In fact, I can zoom in. So it's flooded here with super glue, as you can see. And um, yeah, somebody try to fix it. So the bottom of this uh, string slot is flooded. And it's also wider, much wider than it should be, right? So, so the string actually wiggles when it vibrates, it wiggles inside of the string slot. The B string has the same issue. You can see that it's flooded with uh, super glue and also just too much motion at the front. So let's look at the string slot, the bottom. You can clearly see that this has been filled. Yeah? Okay. Put the string back and you can see how it moves inside. Yeah. So now the G string. Also just too much motion. Although um, the, the bottom of the string slot is okay. It's just too wide. All right. Move over to this string. 
I can see some uh, super glue residue around there. What does it look like? Just like that. Maybe a little bit too much motion. Uh, the A string definitely is moving inside of the string slot. So there is no way to uh, undo this. Okay, so maybe at some point someone filed these for uh, heavier strings for uh, alternate tuning or something. And as you can see, this one is also moving. We see it like this. All right, let's put it back. So now, if only one of the string slots uh, was damaged somehow, uh, by the way, this is a bone nut. On a bone nut, we can, uh, we can do a, a filling, like a dental filling. And this is a curing light. But in this case, I'd have to fix all of them. So it's just too much work. It's, uh, it's going to be less work to just pull it and install a new one. Okay, we're back. So, like I said, I was mistaken about something. Uh, now I'll show you why. So here, uh, I'm just going to look at this through the microscope. As you can see, this is the same nut. Uh, so what was I uh, wrong about? Well, I said it was bone, but it turns out, uh, well, I was wrong, as you can see. It looked like bone, uh, well, but it isn't, okay? So now let me zoom in a little bit uh, closer on uh, this detail here. As you can see, we see the uh, super glue at the bottom of the string slot. And if I turn it this way, you can actually see how much it's been filled. So at some point it was filed too deep and then it was filled with super glue. And we can see the same situation on the B string right there. This is the B string. You can see how uh, shiny it is. And because of surface tension of the super glue while it's liquid, you can see the uh, reflection right there at the bottom of the string slot. Uh, the reflection does not extend all the way to the front edge, which means the strings is actually vibrating inside of the knot. Now on the G string, I don't see that there was a filling, or maybe there was. Yeah, I think there was actually. Um, there was a filling here. That's the D. Um, then, uh, as you remember, as you recall, uh, these string slots were simply too wide. All right, so uh, that's it. Um, this is gonna be a short video today. Um, hope it was interesting and if it was well you know what to do right um, if you want to support this work you can uh, click the link below that says buy me a coffee because well it is kind of late and look at this it's uh that's a.m all right uh 207 and i stay up late so that i edit these videos so if you want to make sure that I stay up late and edit more, you can buy me a coffee. There's a link below. You can also support this work on Patreon and, you know, do some other stuff like click the share button and subscribe. That's it, my friends. I'll see you soon.